everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to Madden 18 on EA Sports. The race for the playoffs is front and center this week. And here's a look at the AFC contenders. And it's not just who is in or out, but how the seating shakes out. What a great time of year. It's the Jets going up against the Broncos. Okay, Larry, we are located a couple miles west of the Colorado State Capitol building here in downtown Denver. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it, this crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the New York Jets and the Denver Broncos. Three quarters of the NFL season are complete. What lurks in our final month? We're underway in week 14. On the return, here's a speedy Jamison Crowder. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. So now here comes the Jet offense as they get ready to take over. They'll be led out by a former Pro Bowl quarterback out of the University of Georgia, Matthew Stafford. That was a solid performance last week, wasn't it? Two touchdowns, no interceptions, ran the team well, won the ball game, bottom line. May not have been earth-shattering, but it didn't need to be. And now movement here right away. Maybe a sign of things to come with this crowd. False start, offense. So that one will be accepted. A shotgun snap for Stafford. Finding his safety valve here. That's complete. And he gets it here to right around the 24 before he's out of bounds. It's a gain of five. And that'll make it second and ten. And the Buffet Boys, the O-line. Hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you got to feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. This is Bilal Powell. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. It's a loss of two. Now third down. And frankly, Brandon, we're talking about things I'm not sure we ever thought we'd talk about in the NFL. And a lot of that is the speed at the linebacker position. A lot of these guys in college, they were safeties. They moved them up to outside linebacker to combat the spread offenses. And now we're seeing it in the NFL. Those same guys using their speed to make plays in the backfield, similar to that one. They go play action here on first down. Crowder's got it over the middle. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Partner, your thoughts on this D-line? I love a unit that can control the run and get after the passer. This is an all-around terrific defensive front. Hard to move the ball against them on the ground, and then when you want to throw it, look out. Here they come after the quarterback. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Out of the gun, Stafford. Throw left side complete. It's Washington. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. How about the start throwing the football? Four for four on this opening drive. Oh, he's slinging it. And oftentimes when you talk about slinging it, you're thinking about a guy throwing it all over the yard, not necessarily accurately. In this case, though, he's honing in on his targets, and he's delivering. Yeah, the opening script. However, they drew it up for this first drive, going to plan so far. The Bilal Powell's numbers on the ground a week ago. 12 carries, 129 yards. And the way they ran the ball last week has to bring a smile to the faces of the entire coaching staff because not only are they seeing a back pile up yardage, they're seeing an offensive line in sync. And that bodes well this late in the season. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Eighth play of this opening drive coming up. This is third down. Three, 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 
The first carry for C.J. Procise. And he showed off the athletic juke. Good little gain there. Not a whole lot of real estate, but a nice carry. Give him nine on the pickup, but they're still a few inches short now on fourth down. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play. First level being the defensive front. Last level being the secondary. But the strong safety position ended up making the tackle. And oftentimes, we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. The MVP of Super Bowl 47 leading his crew out there from Delaware, it's Joe Flacco. And what a bounce back from the knee injury he suffered in the 2015 season. Not the most nimble, most mobile quarterback, but he never was. He's really a throwback to those quarterbacks who played out of the pocket in the days gone by. Flacco. Space to maneuver at the 40. And this is caught. Mercedes Lewis with a grab. 17 yards for the Broncos there as they've got themselves a first down. There's a completion to the tight end, and I think they were looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands. Speed. I mean, a flat-out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? Second down, Flacco to throw. And this one's incomplete. They were looking to get it to Kelvin Benjamin there. Third down here. And the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. The Jets will bring in a nickel set as they try to stop this third down. From the gun, Flacco. Austin's got it left side. And he showcases the spin, a pretty good game before he's taken down. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. Now a man who subbed in for Andy Lee down the stretch last year, Michael Pilardi, to kick it away. As he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And out of bounds, sailed over, looked like right near the pylon. This one's going to be perfect. Directional kicking at its finest right down at the one-yard line. <laughs> On the give, this is their fullback. And he'll get him a little space here up to the five-yard line. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. A good solid game there on first down, but the defense has to be happy they didn't let it pop for anything bigger. Here's Stafford now on second down. Incomplete. Facing the prospect of a punt from their own end zone, they need some cushion. Let's see what they can do on third down. From the gun, here's Stafford. That's complete to Meredith. Trying to find some space to operate, and now they'll have it. A gain of 12, a big first down to get away from the end zone. They'll run it now, out of the gun. <laughs> and he'll be taken down, but not before he gets this football out shy of the 30 to the 29. Offense. That hold coming from the middle of the line, the center. And it's difficult for him because sometimes you get people right over you, and as soon as you snap it, trying to get your hands up and block them, you can be a little bit late getting it done. Let's go. Let's go. Five, three, five, offense. They get Cordy Glenn, the left tackle. Still first down. Give to the fullback on the dive. And a short gain here as he gets it up only to about the six. 
Only a yard on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. That's someone who's pretty happy right there. That's the defensive coordinator. Body after body getting to him before he can get started. There's the option going left on second down. And he'll find some room to get this up to about the 14. He's able to call his own number for eight that time, but it leaves him with a third down. Oh, man, that wasn't far from breaking in a big way into the secondary. Read option, quarterback kept it. And while he didn't get a first down, he did get a nice chunk of yardage. Only a nice tackle prevented it from maybe going all the way. On fourth down on is Dustin Colquitt to kick this away. Back deep is Tavon Austin. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. Now Austin. Oh, shifty. Whoa. An excellent return that time, 26 yards. And this offense will take over right at the midfield stripe with a first and 10. Now a carry for the change of pace back. The rookie, Tariq Cohen. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. So add that tackle for a loss to the two that he had a week ago. And you know what he's doing right now? Smiling. Yeah, definitely doing that. <laughs> but he's also patting his guys on the back, his defensive front, because they're keeping him clean, meaning no one's getting to him as a blocker. He's able to run to the football. And the plays he's making, he's spilling them in the offensive backfield. And the big meet on the D-line. We'll see how they do today. And I'd hate to be an offensive lineman having to deal with these guys. They come in hungry, mean, and confident. They think that no one can block them. Third down now following the run. And the play clock's running down. Third down, Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. Toward the sideline, did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge, and that's good enough for a first down. Solid gain of 18 yards and a Denver first down. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe tapping, and drag it to make sure he gets it done. And that was a nice play by the defense, and it is tough to be an offensive lineman nowadays, especially if you're dealing with how the defensive tackles have evolved. Their quickness, their agility, their speed has changed the big guys in the middle, the center and the offensive guards. Formerly, they were just power players. Now they have to be light on their feet as well to keep up with the speed of the defensive players. It'll be a gain of 11, and that is gonna set up a third and one. Look, the first down marker is out there, but sometimes it's hard to find for an offense when they're in a long yardage situation, which usually means throw the football. In this case, they went against the tendency and ran it, and boy, the reward was there. A big, big pickup, and guess what? It's now third and very short in order to try and pick up a first down. They'll run it now out of the gun, and he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. The rushing numbers last week for Cohen. Seven carries, 51 yards. After the last game, they have plenty of reason to be confident in their running game. And even though they're facing a top 10. Back alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Bronco football to begin quarter number two. They've got a second down and eight to start things out. Again, it's Cohen. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Officially no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. Sometimes play calls boil down to philosophy. You know you're facing one of the top ten units against the run in the NFL. So do you decide to keep smashing against them, or do you decide to throw the ball here? But that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. And on third down, they said, forget about the sticks. We want six. And the 10-year vet knocks it through the goalpost, and that will tie us at 3-3. So the drive stalls out, but they are able to put three points on the board. Yeah, just a yard or two shorter than an extra point, so no problems converting there. And to no one's surprise here in Denver, that'll carry through the back of the end zone for a touchback.
They start the drive with a give to Powell. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. They go again with Powell. And they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. Call it a loss of two on the play. And it'll be third and ten now. Let's just go ahead and go back to that play with his eyes because he's got to read his keys. Runner pass right off the top. He's probably going to read an offensive. And oh, he coughed it up. And his guys are going to get the football at the 28-yard line. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not even going to tip it. I'm going to dock my cap to him. Congratulations. Big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. A nice pickup of 14, and it moves the stick, sets up a first and goal. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field. They try again with Cohen. And after the good game last play, this time they say, uh-uh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. On goal-to-goal -goal runs, when you create lost yardage plays, the only way that happens. And he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. Rex Burkhead, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Broncos are in for six. Getting your back involved, what's the importance there in the passing game? Well, oftentimes you can create mismatches because who's going to cover? And you get him into space, which is where he likes to operate with the ball in his hands. Oftentimes makes people miss, gets that run after the catch, and off he goes. And into the end zone. And he'll very wisely take a knee here as he'll bring this one out to the 25 on the touchback. play action. Here's Stafford. He's going to let this one go deep. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. Wasn't it fun in pregame standing downstairs and watching Matthew Stafford throw the football? I mean, that bad boy it's just whistled. He I mean, can just rock it. It just whistled by us, didn't it? But what is the one knock on him? Accuracy. Yeah. And that's what we just saw there, an incompletion on that throw downfield. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. That catch good for five. It's third down. Now Stafford. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Now it looks like we've got a Bronco that's banged up on the play. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. Now a play fake it at Stafford. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it, but it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. On that play, it was the defensive front that won the battle. They out-leveraged the offensive line, got into the backfield, and held him to no gain. On the catch, it's Crowder. 
And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. It's a gain of 11, but they're still well short. It's fourth down. Here's Dustin Colquitt now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. Now a high kick, almost a pooch punt. It'll be just an 18-yard punt. And the Broncos take over. First down and 10. Throwing here on first down, Flacco. Now he'll let it go deep over the middle. And that's caught inside the 35. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. A gain of 32 that time. Great patience in the pocket. Of course, it's easy to be patient when the protection's good, and it was. Yeah, you've got to pat those guys on the helmet and say thanks because they gave him plenty of time to stay back there, survey the field, go through the reads that he wanted to, and deliver the ball accurately. That was really well executed. Flacco to throw again on second down. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. So now third and ten. A big play to start the drive, but nothing since. And again, it's Flacco to throw. And that will be incomplete as well. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. He was true on his first. This a tough one from 49 yards away. And his kick is absolutely perfect. And they will stretch their lead to 10 now at 13-3. A little bit of a lower trajectory there on the deep kick, and it worked. Had to do it because he had to drive it out low because of the length of the kick. Able to do that, got it above the defense and over the post. And the Jets set to take the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, there's got, got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. Back to throw, Stafford. Now they go screen, it's complete. And he'll get to the 29-yard line, brought down there. Give him five on the screen play, and that'll set up a third down. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still, ended up with a solid game. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. <laughs> we'll call that a 49-yard punt with a return of just two. And it'll be first and 10 Broncos from deep in their own territory. They look to throw on first and ten with Flacco. To the right and complete to Galladay. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. A gain of six there on first. Second down, Flacco now. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. The Broncos on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and four. To pass, Flacco. He'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Broncos first down.
They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. A one-yard gain can look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, hey, congratulations to the defense. They won that one. Come back and get him the next time. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Foul. Face mask. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. Two minutes remain here in the first half. Back to Denver right after this. A reminder that coming up in two minutes, we'll check in with Larry Ridley in Orlando with highlights and analysis of this first half of play. And I'm going to check in with a heater. I'm going to be right there with you, partner. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time and another first down. First down, Flacco. And his throw is incomplete. Mike Wallace, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches had told me in the past. The biggest teaching point, get your head around. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. And he's going to go out of bounds at the 30-yard line. 17 yards for the Broncos there as they've got themselves a first down. As if he didn't have enough to think about on that route, the comeback route, coming back to the football and catching it, decided to make sure he toe-tapped and kept himself in bounds. And that was spectacular, but on the comeback route, maybe a little easier to deal with the sideline since you, you've got better vision of it. I think that's a great point because you should know exactly where you're going and know how much space you have and make sure you get your feet down. But yeah, coming back to the football, I like it. Good vision. Second and 10, Flacco once more. And incomplete there, a nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and 10. Once more, it's Flacco. And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. Terrell Suggs in there to get him. And that's sack number six for him on the year. Well, this has been a pretty sizable drive. They've had some success. Finally, the defensive coordinator found some success of his own. I think he just simply said enough of that. Okay, they've moved the ball well. We need to force the issue from our end, and that's exactly what he did. And this is one of the risks you run when you attempt a long field goal. If you miss, the defense takes over the spot of the placement. So now they've got a chance to get one more drive in before halftime. Room to run inside the 40. And I think he's going to go. They're not going to get him. And all the way in, touchdown, New York. Bilal Powell as the first half is winding down. And the Jets get the quick strike touchdown. I think everyone in the league talks about finishing, don't they? Doesn't matter whether it's a quarter, a half, a game, a series, whatever. But they're finishing the first half in fine style, putting that one in the end zone. They did, and they didn't leave much time on the clock either. Well done. This one taken just inside the 10. Oh, looting the tackle. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. They'll start things on first with Torrey Cohen. And he'll get this up to about the 40. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 11 seconds remaining in this first half. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Operating out of the gun, Flacco. He's going to dump that off to his running back, Cohen. 
And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 at enemy territory. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. to the left anyway. Sorry, Larry, your hard work appreciated by so many men and women, but not today as we get back to the action in the second half. The first look at the NFL scoreboard comes from down in Arizona and the early lead there belonging to the Cardinals. And we'll keep you abreast of how that one shakes out. They begin the drive on the ground with Cohen. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That one going for a gain of 11 and a Bronco first down. Well, that's the desired outcome coming out here in the second half of being able to run the football and establish a little bit of pace and maybe even a bit of dominance at the line of scrimmage. And they want that to continue. Way too early to think about this being ball control time. But... The way they're running it, you got to think. They may want to continue that and see if they can go ahead and grind their opponents into submission. Play clock winding down. Now it's Flacco. The Fasano here brings it in. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Uh, coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? On third and one, I think everyone in the stadium thought they'd try and run the football there, but they tried to surprise the defense and hit something through the air. Instead, it results in an incompletion. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And he didn't quite have the backspin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. Bilal Powell and his offensive mates retaking the field. And he's closing in on that number that all running backs circled beginning of the year, the number 1,000. Couldn't do it on this drive. And you have to think to yourself that this moment, getting to this spot, it started in the offseason, right? Not just the workouts, right? Not just getting yourself physically prepared to play, but mentally as well as your team, as well as your unit, head coach, offensive coordinator. We run the football. We give you opportunities. He's taking advantage of it. And when you get this close to the mark, you just hope things don't tighten up, right? You probably want to get there and get it in your rearview mirror. You really do, don't you? Because now it becomes predominant, and you wonder about play calling as well. Do you want to call plays to get that out of the way, or are you still calling plays to win the game first? That becomes the burden of the play caller. From the gun on third down, Stafford. And a quick throw here, that's complete. The completion there winds up a wash, and it'll bring up fourth down. That goes in the category of a play that the defense is going to cherish and excites them. A completion, yes, you give up the pass, but no gain. I mean, that's exactly what you want on defense. And sets up the fourth down. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. First and ten here for Flacco. It's complete right side to Benjamin. And he will finally be taken down, but not before he reaches the 38. A big play there on the catch and run. 42 yards. Oftentimes, guys who do a really nice job on the wide receiver screen plays are really good punt returners. It's the same skip. And it's a fumble. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. He didn't secure the ball. They'll need to get the playoff quickly. Now Cohen. 
And he'll get this down to about the 30, 31 yard line. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? On third down, it's Cohen. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. Only a yard on the pick up there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. Now that was a big time play by the defense. They as well knew where the first down line was, and they didn't let them get anywhere near it. Time running out here on the play clock. I don't think this will even, nope, it doesn't even get there. Well short, and this score will stay right where it is. Now a chance to take advantage of that missed field goal. First and 10, way up at the 37. Well, close game, second half. You obviously hate to leave three out on the field. Especially in a game like this when you know points are hard to come by. That was one of their best opportunities so far. And they come away with nothing. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. A really nice gain of 25 yards. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's got Rome. And all the way in. Touchdown, New York. Bilal Powell, his second touchdown of the game and his ninth on the year. And the Jets have taken the lead. Now here's Bryant to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. First and 10, and Flacco looking to throw. Benjamin with it over the middle. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That one good for 13 and a Denver first down. And the play clock's running down. Here's Flacco. And some room to roam now. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Give him 14 yards there and a Denver first down. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. From the gun, Flacco. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. They run. This is Cohen. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. And a fake here, direct snap to the up man. And he won't get there. They stop him a few yards short of the line to gain. A little trickeration there, but it doesn't fool this defense. It's such a risky play there to fake it. You're either the hero or the GOAT. Here, they're going to be the GOAT. Unfortunate, too, because you know they thought they had something there. They don't call it just a call. They don't just say, oh, what the heck, let's go ahead and fake it here. They feel like they've got something on. They've got the defense in the right spot. Just unsuccessful in that opportunity. They hit that crossing route really well. Excellent timing, puts it right on him, and he keeps running. Yeah, turned it upfield for good yardage. They'll run it now out of the gun. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, partner, they've been running it well the entire game, and the big guys up front, they're a huge reason why. And now they're reaping the benefits as they continue to open up big holes and gain nice yardage. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. 
but really that was no surprise there. They've been running it well all game, and I know goals change all the time, but any team will take that type of run each and every time. Now Washington, and he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. 10 yards is the pickup, good enough for a Jet first down. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it here. Why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. So while the offense has had a big day, no one on that side of the ball is excited about seeing a loss like that. Their goal, to make every play positive, and when you have a bad one like that, your next goal is to not let it spiral into more. They get nine yards back on the run there, and they're left with a much more makeable third and two. But you got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. And he's got it. And he's going to take it in for a Jets touchdown. Jamison Crowder, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Jets find a way to stretch their lead. Now here's Bryant to kick it away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. Flacco from the gun. And complete to Lewis over the middle. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. Play clock winding down. Now Flacco trying to lay one up deep. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. Play action, Flacco. Caught right side, it's Lewis. And he's gonna be out of bounds, but able to take it inside the 40 yard line. 17 yards for the Broncos there as they've got themselves a first down. They go pass again with Flacco. And that would not to be, it's incomplete. So they couldn't hook up as time is now running. Welcome back now to Denver. It's the Broncos trailing, but they do have possession of the football as we begin quarter number four. Incomplete on first down. Now Flacco on second. And a hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. So a third and ten, and defensively, a dime look. Six DBs. Flacco will take to the air again. He's going to find his man. That's Tavon Austin. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. Give him 14 yards there and a Denver first down. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. And a scary incompletion almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. Flacco here on second down. Wide open receiver complete. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. 19 yards on the pick up there, and now they'll have it first and goal. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. No gain on that run, and while this team is down, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe you just have to think about different style of running in order to get this guy going. And it's caught. 
And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Only three yards there on the completion. That'll lead to a third and goal. They come out with one back and three tight ends. Now Flacco. Now a hit, and Flacco drops the football. It's loose. And the return just out across the 15 to the 16-yard line. Brandon, I don't want to violate any of our broadcasting rules by declaring a game over before it's over, but that one... That puts him in real jeopardy there. Absolutely. It was a two-possession game. It is a two-possession game at this stage in the fourth. They needed points out of that drop. And obviously now, no chance at all to get those points that they so desperately needed. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. They'll fake it. Now Stafford able to get away. No, bottled up, fumble, it's out, it's loose. And fortunately for him, he's able to get it back, but it will be a loss on the play. So it goes as a fumble, but the key thing, not a fumble loss. Yeah, that, that stat's big, isn't it? I mean, it, I remember watching teams play. The ball might be on the ground a number of times during the game, but if the other team doesn't get it, that's a huge difference in the ball game. And in this case, they were able to retain possession. It's a big play there for the Jets on third. 52 yards. Now a first down throw. Stafford. And it's a short one here. Complete to the tight end. The completion good for three and it's second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get a head of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. Stafford now to throw. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. They got to get to the 20 to keep the drive alive on third down. Play action. Stafford. He finds his target. It's Crowder. And they do get him down, but not before he reaches the four-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. So much of this game is about leverage. We always talk about low man wins in the trenches. Plus like that in just about every position. And sometimes if you lose that leverage and you're losing the battle, just jump up at the line of scrimmage and try and bat the ball away. And that's exactly what happened there. From the three now, here they come on third and goal. the gun Stafford that's caught at the two a great job to hold him to just a yard there now it's fourth and goal whether you're playing West Coast offense or not one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down in other words look for the big shot but be smart and I think they did exactly that on that play they didn't get the first down but they're taking care of the ball well yeah and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half so they settle for just the three there, but clearly anything helps when you're trying to salt one away here in the fourth. Without a doubt, I think a touchdown would have been the final nail. But three does give him some breathing room and lets him build up a little cushion. Throwing here on first down, Flacco. And he slings one that's incomplete. The intended receiver, Tavon Austin. And that'll bring up second down. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. Flacco got his man complete over the middle. It's Lewis. And hello, he's going to be knocked backward as he'll be marked down. You got the big lead defensively willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. 
tackle him after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Gets it to Benjamin. It's caught. And he brings this up to the 46. Good enough for the first. Denver has the first down. The play going for 15 yards. They'll need to get the playoff quickly. They look to throw on first and 10 with Flacco. And he's going to be out of bounds, but able to take it inside the 40-yard line. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. Defensively here, you've got the cushion, but back-to-back -back pretty big pass plays there. Bend but don't break it. Are they bending too much? I think that they are. To me, it'd be like playing basketball, and you put up a token press. Make sure you get up there and make them eat up some time. Make it a little bit of resistance so they can't just run it right down your throat. Time running out here on the play clock. Here's Flacco. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. That one good for the completion percentage, but no gain. It'll be third down. Love the effort. Love the dramatics. Getting the feet down. How about a little step shuffle along the sideline there? Almost like a great ballet dancer or a tap dancer. All for no gain, though? I was going to say, it's so pretty, <laughs> and it gets you nothing. <laughs> They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. False start there. That will set the offense back five yards. Brandon, the lineman, certainly flinched there before the snap. A good call. Well, we're back where we started. It'll be first and ten after the five-yard penalty. They go play action here on first down. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here, this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. And again, it's Flacco to throw. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. The catch good for six yards, but now it's third and goal. They got to have six here. It's third and goal. And the play clock's running down. Third and goal, Flacco. Hard throw, incomplete. Brandon, some of those windows that throw the football that exist when you're between the 20s, they don't exist when you're this close to the goal line. But as a former DB, I liked it closer to the goal line. Tighter windows made it easier to cover people, actually. And that is incomplete. They're turned away on fourth and goal. And the Jets are going to get the football back. So now with a two-minute warning coming up fast, that puts a mammoth dent in their comeback hopes. I like how you phrased it. It's a dent because there's still opportunity. They've got to get the ball back on defense, obviously, twice. But guess what? This thing is not close to being over. They need to go ahead and play it out. Not over. As you said, two-score game still. And he is out of bounds, able to get it across the 20-yard line. And the play goes for 19 yards, gives him a new set of downs. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead, fourth quarter, continuing to throw the football. Are you thinking about Super Bowl 51? Atlanta had the lead against New England, and they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. And I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now, I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> You've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. On third down, it's Powell. Once more the juke. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. And quickly, we're going to get another stop here with 1.54 left as they call the timeout defensively. They'll run it now out of the gun. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get it behind the line. 
Second down, offense behind the sticks here. Second and 13. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Third and 15 here after the first and second down plays went in the wrong direction. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And an alley to run! And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Four yards on the pickup there, but it's going to take him to fourth down. Here's Dustin Colquitt now. He's been terrific so far. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. The Broncos offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. And last time, they had it fourth and goal, rolled the dice, didn't get it. Now they've got to put that behind them, try to put together another drive. A simple tip of the cap, a nod of the head to the defense. Congratulations, you got us last time. But you didn't hold us the whole time. We got down to position where we were able to be in position to score. Let's go ahead and attack again. Continue to have that kind of confidence. Not worry about the one play that didn't allow them to get into the end zone. And this time they'll be trying to get it into the end zone. We'll see what they do. Setting up to throw Flacco. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. Obviously a tough spot here. They need a lot of luck to win this game, but still a small chance. They've got to make sure they get the ball to the sidelines, get out of bounds, preserve clock. Third down. Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. He's got his man. That's Wallace. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. 17 yards for the Broncos there as they've got themselves a first down. And on second and 10 now. Once more, it's Flacco. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Cohen. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. And now the spike comes with 15 seconds on the clock. Second down, Flacco now. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And he almost intercepted it. They haven't picked a ball off yet. That probably should have been their first. And it's third down now. And movement by one of the Broncos up front. And in comes the flag. Offense. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Flacco. He's going to let it fly. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Got to be wary of throwing an interception here because the defense knows they're going to get tested deep. That's why they're going to put a couple of extra guys back there to try and prevent that. Yeah, late in the fourth quarter here, trying to preserve the lead. Here's Flacco, and this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked up by the rookie from NC State, Josh Jones. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it, and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So for the Jets, it's an important win for their playoff hopes as they move to 8-5. and five. And they'll get another road test next week as they have to go to New Orleans to take on the Saints. Meanwhile, for Denver, it's a potentially fatal blow to their playoff chances as they drop to 6-7 and seven on the year. And they'll try to get back to their winning ways next week as they head to Indianapolis to take on the Colts.
That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon, everyone, as we say so long from Denver.